Hey everybody, I'm Paste Magazine TV editor Allison Keen here with our editor in chief Josh Jackson, and this is the TV Power Ranking, the top 10 shows of the week as voted on by our Paste writers and editors. And this week we're starting with number 10, The Cry on Sundance TV. Now, the Cry actually originally premiered on Sundance Now, which is the streaming service for Sundance TV. Uh, it stars Jenna Coleman and Ewan Leslie as a couple whose baby goes missing when they are in Australia. So I read that, and the first thing I thought was, was it the dingo that ate the baby? I don't, I don't I was it's, a little disappointed to hear maybe not. I thought that more than once, though, while watching it, I will admit. But uh, our own Amy Glenn, who reviewed it, said, uh, and her her uh, headline is perfect, a gripping, sophisticated anatomy of gaslighting. And that's exactly what it is. Um, it's really intense. And, and this, there's a mystery that builds up and lots and lots of twists and turns. And um, it's really interesting. I mean, Sundance TV has a long history of really, really great, interesting programming. They've backed away from originals a little bit, but they've acquired a lot of great shows from England, from Germany, from a lot of different countries um, that are always worthwhile. So don't forget if you have cable that Sundance TV does exist and it I does. highly and see, recommend you watch it's it. It's given us some really good shows and Jenna Coleman, always a pleasure to watch. Always fantastic, yes. Uh, number nine this week is Stumptown, which we are still fans of. It's a really fun show. Um, and I, my, my note this week is that it is clearly written and created by Gen Xers. <laughs> uh, I feel from the from the soundtrack to just we, the sensibilities. We gotta have our moment sometimes. So. <laughs> it just feels like a really cool throwback sort of of 70s detective show, um, but set in modern times and in Portland. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It, it's, a, it's a really good example of a, a network procedural gone right. Mm -hmm. So we remain fans. Uh, number eight this week is Impulse on YouTube Premium, which Josh, you yeah. watched the first episode of this. I did. It's on season two now, but yes. um, I watched the, the I, I'm way behind, but our TV writers really like this one. I really like the uh, the pilot. It's it's a you know a teen with superpowers. Hey. We've, we've seen that a few <laughs> times, but this felt a little darker, a little more realistic, a little heavier. Um, the the superpowers are basically she can teleport, and it's a very defensive thing. In the, in the first episode, there's some really hard scenes. Uh, she's sexually assaulted. She's kidnapped. And this is her superpower. And it, it seems, it teases that she might not be the only one with this particular superpower. And yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued. I will, I want to keep watching this one. Yeah. And it, so YouTube has changed their strategy a little bit with their originals where uh, now you can watch them with commercials. I believe they're not all behind a paywall. I'm not sure if Impulse is one of those or not. I know that Cobra Kai is available that way. The, um, the pilot is available for free without, okay. without a paywall. So check it out if you're interested. Um, yes, we have a couple writers that are really, really into the show, and it certainly is an interesting twist on something we've seen maybe before. Um, number seven this week is BoJack Horseman on Netflix, which is a beloved show in the Paste uh, I, office. But I don't know what else I can say about this show. I, I <laughs> think it is one of the smartest, um, kindest uh shows on television. It's it's even though it's about this horse who does horrible, horrible things. It is about him trying to be better, and the twist at the end of this first half of its final season, there's more episodes coming uh, in, in January, January mm -hmm. um, really makes you go, oh, yeah, so I'm glad that he's starting to find redemption, and yet there's still lots of pain out there that he's caused, and, and there's, there's, still recon there's, there's a reckoning still coming, it seems. Right. Well, on the lighter end of the spectrum, maybe, uh, number six this week is The Durrells and Corfu on PBS, which was the series finale after four seasons, and it broke my heart and I may never love again. <laughs> it was really good, though. I say that it was on the lighter side, but it, it just is very emotional. I mean, at this point, um, you know, it, it, we've talked about it a little bit in the past, but an English family that moves to the Greek island of Corfu in the 1930s, kind of between the world wars, and so they eventually have to go home to England because, uh, you know, the war is moving in, into Albania and in to Greece and it's just not safe for them to stay and it's just so sad on so many levels and um, but it was a really beautiful finale and how like call the midwife is it <laughs> well it's it's good comfort TV okay. although feel, I don't find call the midwife that comforting because okay. there's always a woman screaming so in childbirth a, throughout so if you just don't want to see the childbirth but you want to be comforted like call the midwife this is a show for watch you. Is the that girls fair? in corfu it okay, started that's... as a show that i just sort of had on in the background and then ended up just becoming so engrossed with the story it's really witty and funny and light and the cast is really fantastic so um a big fan of that and and yes you can catch up on pbs uh number five this week is ruby on rooster teeth and that's spelled r-w-b-y r-w-b-y i stumped hard for this so 
Ruby, <laughs> I'm sure this might be one on our list you might not be familiar with unless you, like me, have a kid who is into anime and Western style anime. This this series, um, it's one of the advantages of having kids. You discover sometimes really great <laughs> content that you would have otherwise never looked for. Um, if you liked um, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, the animated series, this feels, it's its that kind of epic world building. The creator, Monty Oom, um, uh, passed away in 2015, but this series has just gotten better and better and better even still. Um, there's, it's really funny. Um, the characters are uh, wonderfully memorable. Even the villains seem iconic. And uh, season seven just dropped on Rooster Teeth. You have to be a member of Rooster Teeth to see season seven premiere. But if you're, if you haven't watched any of this, you can go to YouTube right now and just start watching short episodes. Really funny, really fun. Um, uh, for any anime fans, yeah. um, this is this is an American series, but it, it's in that style. Yeah, Rooster Teeth is really interesting because they are a subscriber-based original content producer, and they have a really devoted fandom with a lot of great shows. And I feel like I didn't even know about it until maybe two years ago, and mm -hmm. they had already been going strong, and they're super successful at what they do. Genlock is the other one that's, that's really right, well yeah. done, another animated series that they've done. Which recently moved to Adult Swim, because I think Rooster Teeth is owned by Turner now. A little industry info for you, but yeah. Yeah, so it's it's an interesting thing. Check it out for sure. Yeah, I think it's um, going to be on HBO Max now. Oh boy, stay <laughs> tuned to PaceMagazine.com for all of those all because we're covering all the different it all. ways you can watch things. But <laughs> for yes, sure, Ruby. Uh, yes, Ruby. And number four this week is Mr. Robot on USA. Josh and I have talked about how we used to watch the show. We've fallen off the wagon. Um, I have not gone back in for the this final season, but our writer Liz Miller says it's great. In fact, and I quote, she said, I would say it's essentially further proof that Sam Esmail has always known exactly what story he's telling and clearly having fun playing with the limits of what TV can do. And that is something Mr. Robot has certainly always done. It has, been. and it's made me want to go back and, and catch back up on the story because, you know... The, there's so much TV out there, it's easy to get behind on any of these series. I really enjoyed Mr. Robot, um, but you, you never know if things are just going to, if it's going to leave you dry in the end or yeah. if it's worth continuing to watch. Um, this is one that I think I'll be going back to. It seems like it has a clear end game, and that is something that That's appeals to me. That's hard to pull off, <laughs> yes. Especially with the journey that it's taken. So yeah. I'm intrigued. Uh, number three this week is Watchmen on HBO, a show that has, I think, will remain on the power ranking for as long as it's going to I, run. I think so. I, this is a show that I really hope knows where it's going. Mm -hmm. um, I've enjoyed every episode so far. I really enjoyed this third episode. It introduces Gene Smart as um, the former six, Silk Spectre oh, yeah. agent, now Agent Blake. And Gene Smart, I, I'm so glad to see her getting uh, good roles right yes. now because she is she's just a phenomenal actress. And she really owns this episode, and every from from frame to frame, it's it's tall. She tells a long joke over the course of uh, of the episode in a phone call to to Doctor Manhattan, and it, it, the payoff is wonderful. And uh, yeah, this is a show that it's the mystery is unfolding. Damon, Damon Lindelof likes to sort of. Uh, create more questions than than answers he gives you, and that's really happening right now. But it does seem like he's got a self-contained story to tell. So hopefully, again, like this episode, the the whole payoff will be as good as I'm hoping. Gene Smart as Silk Spectre telling a long joke to Dr. Manhattan over the phone is the first thing I've heard about Watchmen that actually makes me want to watch it. Oh, it's, it's absolutely <laughs> worth watching. That sounds amazing. Um, number two this week is The Great British Baking Show on Netflix, which had its finale, and it was a strange season, but a very satisfying finale. We're not going to give any spoilers away if you're not caught up, but I actually really ended up liking the weekly uh, episode instead yeah. of having it to binge. Uh, it was fun. It was it was appointment television for us. Uh, you know, the, the weekend would hit, and we'd know we had a new episode yeah. to watch. It was my, my wife and my daughter. And and uh, yeah, it was a satisfying ending. You know, they had three very strong bakers in the, the final. The, it was a strange season in a lot of ways because this season felt like what we had all feared last season was going to be like when the show moved from BBC to Channel 4. Uh, maybe a little more commercial, a little cattier. Younger. Very young and camera ready. Yeah. Um, but I think ultimately the best three bakers made it to the finals, which is kind of all you can hope for. Um, and, you know, we've talked a lot about how Great British Baking Show is not like any other competition series. It's not like any other baking show. And, our, you know, for fans, the 
hope is that it will continue to be the sweet, gentle show we've enjoyed and not go too far into some of this gimmicky stuff, um, one of which was eliminating two bakers in one week. Yeah, that doesn't um, work for a while. It didn't work. It was a really weird week to choose that. And they well. waited way too long, and it was. But, but the finale awkward. I thought was great. And one it of the was. great things about the show that, that you can see in the finale is that these contestants became really good friends. They like, did really genuinely it, bond. It seemed, you know, it seemed <laughs> like this group really loved each other, supported each other, uh, cried together, um, helped each other. And I loved seeing it, you know, at the end, there's no spoilers, but I'll just say that at the end, they were showing pictures of, of the different uh, contestants getting together hanging uh, in out after the show ended and, yeah and England <laughs> after the show ended so that it was, was fun. so cute and sweet and that's what you want from it the is great a british cute baking and sweet show. show uh so number 1 this week is the apple tv plus launch we have combined all of Apple's shows into one for the power ranking this week. Next week, we'll break them out individually. But, but what this, shows earned at that place? Well, this is the question. Uh, it was certainly the thing that everyone was talking about the most, but mm -hmm. the shows themselves were quite a mixed bag. Um, for All Mankind, uh, very which I, good. Yeah, I, I've not watched a ton, but I've re I really love this show and can't wait to watch the rest of it. The really interesting premise. Uh, and then The Morning Show, which was really the marquee show with Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, and which Steve Carell. Which did not hit as well with our critics as it we were not. thinking. We were thinking that would be the one, but it's more Emily Dickinson. And... <laughs> Maybe. Well, Morning Show is one that is really fun to watch, but it's just the writing on all these shows. Actually, you could say this about all the series right now with For All Mankind being maybe the one that's different, but you can see the money that is being thrown at all these shows. I mean, they are beautifully uh, everything. It's just A-list stars and like gorgeous sets and like amazing cinematography. And you can see how much money Apple's pumping into this. At the same time, the writing is not always up to snuff. So, so, uh, so all that money pumping into making them look beautiful. And I could not find a way to watch it on my television. Ah, I have I use Roku. TV. Yeah, I don't have an Apple TV, and there was no app. So I think there's that. That seems like a very strange thing. So That's a yeah, I didn't know if you had any insight <laughs> there. But no, uh, yeah, there's. I think there should be. This rollout has been strange in a lot of ways because some of the shows are weekly, some they're dropping all at once. Um, like we said, uh, Dickinson is a really interesting show that um, takes a few episodes to get into. Uh, C with Jason Momoa is again like just gorgeously produced, but it's a really kind of strange fantasy story that uh, I'm not sure knows exactly what it's saying. Uh, we have a ranking of all these at pacemagazine.com in the TV section, but uh, it, it was an interesting rollout. They sort of hit every genre and showed how much money they had, and it's not super sh uh, clear how people are going to watch these shows or if they are. Although a tip, if you have bought an Apple product since September, you get a free year of Apple TV Plus. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Absolutely. So. so we basically have a new streaming service coming out each week. So we'll tell you about the next one next week. Disney and Plus to come. <laughs> it's hard to keep up. There is a lot of television. But yeah, Apple and Disney, you know, everyone said they're going to really change the game. And we'll see this month. Uh, we've gotten a peek now at what Apple's doing. We'll get a peek at what Disney's doing next next week so the Mandalorian maybe the Mandalorian which we'll we don't have no screeners but no screeners yet see how it goes well that's it for us this week thank you so much for joining us at the Pace Studio here in downtown Atlanta and tune in next time for our top TV picks of the week